everyone, as promised, Rosie Green is back and we are going to do a makeup that suits anyone with an abundance of red, red undertones in their skin. So maybe yeah. if you've had rosacea, yours is very good at the moment, so it's just a little bit. Yeah. Um, or if you've got um, acne or any kind of irritation to your skin, these are the colours that you should go for. Actually, would you mind just putting your hair up for me? Yeah. No I'm going to start with Tolerane. Um, yeah, this my, is... Well, it's one of my favourites in that it just doesn't exacerbate the problem at all, I've found. Dermatologist recommended. Um, it's by a brand called La Roche Posay. Oh god, that feels so nice. Nice and cooling. Yeah. Um, always starting with a nice, tacky, hydrated skin because that kind of skin actually allows the foundation to migrate beautifully. So I'm going to put myself up a little bit. I'm small. Yeah. Even though I'm massive. <laughs> a big bird next to you. <laughs> oh my god, we're both big birds. It's just my head is massive. <laughs> When I went riding as a child, my head, they could never fit a helmet on my head. They looked at me and puzzled and would shake their head and just go, oh dear, what do we do with this child? Isn't that amazing? Whereas I've got the opposite, I've got total pea head. Little pea head. Yeah. Pea head and... Big head. Big head, Brussels yeah. head. I was trying yeah. to think of another vegetable. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so nice hydration. That's a really lovely yeah. brand if you've got any irritation to your skin. Now, there are two um, green neutralizers that I would definitely use on anyone with high coloring. And I'm a bit scared of green neutralizers, just so we know. Why? <laughs> well, because I think when I was like 17, I went and bought the uh, Boots Number no. 7 kind of super thick green stuff and probably, you know, didn't blend it at all, just kind of put it. <laughs> Mrs. Shrek? Yeah, exactly. It was a good look. <laughs> you know. Yeah, they have developed. The boys loved so it. Much better than that. And I think, yeah, we thought that it was a concealer almost. Yes. And the formulations weren't as translucent as they yeah. are now. Um, so, Iborian is one that I absolutely love, and that's got um, an SPF of 25 in. And again, it kind of neutralizes the skin, so it takes away the redness, um, but it doesn't leave that kind of mask. But I'm going to be using a really new product here um, from a friend of mine. Um, his name's Daniel Sandler. He's a London-based makeup artist. He's got a fantastic range. You've got those lovely watercolours. Oh my God, they're lovely, the watercolours. Yeah. Only I don't ever use them because of my rosacea, so I worry that I look too red, you know, so right. I can see that they're lovely. He does do neutral shades as well. Does he? Okay. Anyway, this is beautiful because it's got a lovely serum-like texture to it. In fact, I've probably put too much on my hand. You only need a tiny, tiny bit. It's got hyaluronic. Um, and then calendula in it, so it's really calming. Let me know what you think. Mm. <clears throat> so I'm just going to place it on the areas of high colouring and I'm going to leave it quite obvious. So don't freak out, Rosie. It won't, okay, I don't want to know like back. Crichton from Red Dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> All these childhood memories yeah. flooding straight back. Yeah, anyone sub 40 is not going to get that reference. The point of a neutraliser is to push back the red so that the foundation concealer doesn't have to be as heavy but you wouldn't use this and then go out because yeah. it has that sort of cast over it that needs to work well with the base but it, it's much easier to cover oh, I just love the texture of this and also when you've got when your rosacea is really bad yeah your skin's dry isn't it yeah it is well you think it's dry it's actually sort of inflamed and so it feels dry so the temptation is to load loads of stuff on but I know what you mean it kind of you need that juiciness to kind of counteract it. But it's interesting to me that you're doing that so subtly. So it's not like you're using it to kind of actually cover. You're no. using it to give a sort of impression of an yeah. even tone. Yes, right? even tone, which yeah. I think now we've got that even tone. I yeah. know you can see it and you'll yeah. be thinking, well, no, it's too much, but that's perfect for Ooh. our base. Okay, I like it. Now, um, lots of concealers that are great to cover up. Vichy Derma Blend is a great concealer, really great price, lovely colours. They've got brand yeah. new colours. That's really great. Just I to recommend do... that all the time to people because right. it's, it's, it's such a good price and it seems to really blend well. Blend well and yeah. it lasts. Yeah. Um, and it's just not too big. Some of the foundation yeah. sticks are just too big. Yeah. So I love this. I also love um, CC Plus from It Cosmetics yeah. and the woman Jamie Ken. Thank you. Who sold the brand for well, like a few million? Billion, yeah, billion, billions, billions, billions. Yeah, um, created this excellent product which we all love. It's a, a CC cream, but actually it's got great coverage. Very, very hydrating. So that's another product. But I think it's going to be too heavy. For really you. glossy as well, isn't? It? Like yeah. you kind of it looks like skin underneath it rather than. They do have one for oily skin, and they do have okay. an even brightening one. Okay, it's not called even brightening. 
it brightens your skin. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, for this, I'm actually going to use a collection of different concealers here. Um, these are the Water Weight Concentrates from MAC, which I absolutely love because they're super, super sheer, yeah. but they last. Oh, I don't even know and about for these. your skin, yeah. I don't want... Actually, can you just pass me those tissues over there? We're, we're stuck in a little space. Um, for your skin, I don't want to overload it with too much product because it will read as heavy made up skin and you're such a natural um, looking girl with your freckles and your colouring yeah a heavy sort of mask of makeup doesn't suit you whatsoever no right? I really struggle with that and, I, and, and actually I thought maybe as I got older that I should step up the coverage but actually I think you're right it's just about doing it sort of strategically with bits of concealer rather than kind of going for the full mask well I think you can step up mm. the concealer mm. but in the right area so mm. you can just do it bespoke so just those areas that you need a little bit of coverage, just aim it there, but don't have that full coverage mm. all over the skin. And I think we just kind of use those old habits, don't we? Just yeah. thinking, right, I'm just going to put base all over my face, then I'm going to conceal. We're actually just using a great product in small areas of your face it makes a massive difference. So you're not going to actually put something all over at all nope. this time? Okay. I mean, it helps because I know you, but even if I didn't really know you that well, mm. just your sort of light freckles and the colouring that you have, mm. the way you dress, your sort of style, mm. I know instantly that a heavy mask of makeup would scare you. Yeah. And you wouldn't like it. You'd feel like, oh, I've got makeup on, Karen, and I don't like it. Yeah, I would not like that. And I don't like that sort of powdery, powdery matte look either. So this formula, I find, is amazing. So almost, you could say I'd probably use it as a foundation, really, mm. but I'm just... Seeing how it sits on the skin, but because it's lovely and hydrated and it's got the serum of Daniel's primer on, then it migrates really well and it just evens everything out. So how does the concealer work with the primer to get rid of any sort of grey cast then? Or is that just that it's sinking into the it's skin slowly? The skin, okay, so, it's so going to, it's going to, to look fade. a bit grey and green initially, but yes. then it kind of goes. Okay. Yes, because you're going to add a little bit of warmth. Yeah. Now here, just under your chin, you're a little bit paler, which most people are because mm. this area is um, obscured by the sun, by your chin. Mm. So people often get quite confused on what colour to paint their face because they're looking at their white neck and their sort of tanned body. So yeah. just adding a little bit of the product, just blending it in there, just so that it all looks Oh, that's good, looks I normally just ignore my neck. <laughs> <laughs> Can't ignore the neck. <laughs> so really just balancing it in. So I've used the white shade. You see these two colours here? Yeah. Um, and I'm just adding a little bit of darkness now, just on the bottom of your cheekbones. Because if I just use one flat colour, mm. everything looks flat. Okay. So I'll try and blend these two colours together. So I almost get like a third shade. Mm. Um, but it allows me to get the right colour. So darker around your hairline, chin, and then lighter around the front panel. Can you explain to me why that's flattering? Because it's flattering, isn't it, to put like dark, a sort of darker bronzer or a darker concealer around the hairline. Is it? Mm. it kind of squishes your face a bit, which in some ways prettifying right it, it adds dimension okay so if it's flat mm. your face is flat okay but if you have a lighter part at the front and darker at the back it just amplifies your bone structure and just oh, okay. makes your face much more pretty it's amplifying yeah. your bone structure it's funny isn't it just something that subtle or so look in the mirror do you feel shrek like or do you feel that that's <gasps> and light? no i love it oh my god i feel that's super light and lovely and gorgeous and, and you can't see the red i mean you can't see the red you can't see the red but I can see your skin. Yes. That's the most important thing. So it's a double whammy of, like, amazingness. So good, hydrated skin. Yeah. You can blend softly with a concealer. So the yeah. concealer's going to give you a bit more coverage. Yeah. So there we go. That's and can you just show tip. us that, that um, brush? Because that's what I need to go and buy Right. Now. So, so this is a MAC brush. Okay. Forgive me. I think it's 191. Okay. I'm not sure. I love it because I hate wastage. Yeah. And the flat brush doesn't absorb so okay. much product. Yeah. yeah, I'm a bit stingy. I like to make sure that I use every bit of foundation that I've bought. Yeah. And this is Real Technique setting brush, which I use all the time because it's little and delicate and it's fluffy, so it just blends everything. Okay. <coughs> right, I'm going to go in with a little bit of concealer now under the eyes. Okay. So this is going to be lighter still, and I'm going to be using Delilah, which again isn't a brand we both like. Paraben free, natural, okay. cruelty free. Um, I'm going to put it on my hand. the dishwasher as well. That'd be good. <laughs> and just a little bit, Rosie, if you just look straight down the lens for me, straight ahead, and it's just going to be in this area. And again, like I used with those concealers, just put it on and then just allow the 
product to sink into your skin. Just that sort of moment really, really helps the product. So many people put on their concealer and then do this. <gasps> yes. Are you guilty of that? Yeah. Which means... Well, do you know what? I've given up putting stuff on under my eyes because I just... I don't have particularly bad um, discoloration. No. It's uh, one area that I'm lucky in. So, but I... Anything I put on just seems to make it look worse rather than better. And what do you use? Well, so I just use a, a cream... Well, I was guilty of using the kind of two chiclet in the wrong place, which we all did for so long. Um, <laughs> did we? Yeah, maybe you did. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I... Then I will use a kind of creamy concealer, but actually, I, I think it's like anything. You just realise you don't actually need it. Right. Okay. Just check in the mirror, see if you are happy with that, and she'll tell oh me God. if she's not. <laughs> no, I'm really happy with that, and I have to say that it's something you'd think that I would be. You know, I've been in this industry for so long, I should be able to create that myself. But, but you're I... good at looking at other people's faces. Yes. You know, sometimes <laughs> when it's a personal thing, it's we get this sort of weirdness like almost like face blindness you yes. can't see yourself also i think it's you know we learn all the time and i'm always learning from you and from my other friends in the industry that actually you know the things that you do because you're looking at it from a different perspective it's just so helpful i think we should all get our friends to tell us what they think we should be doing now blush mm. i'm going to go in with canyon from laura mercier um, i know you don't like blusher yeah well i don't i don't have blusher because i sort of worry that it will make me look even redder so it's kind of like i haven't Blusher and red wine I haven't had for years. <laughs> so this is like a warm shade, not too browny. Yeah. Um, and I'm just dabbling and I'm just patting it just here on the highest part of your cheekbone. And mm. mainly, Rosie, is because I just want to enhance that nice highlight underneath your eye. Yeah. So it's just to lift. Your redness is mainly in the front, but I'm just applying a little bit there. Okay, but so I'm you're putting it further away further from the away. redness. Okay, and the only the the fact that you've so brilliantly neutralised the redness means I can take the blusher. But I would never use a pink, a berry colour. Oh, that's That's why it's just a lovely warm <sighs> colouring to go and complement your eyes and your skin. But otherwise, if you don't put the blush on, it just ends up again looking too made up. But it's very delicate. I literally just patted that same brush that I use for your base. Because if you used a berry colour, that would pick up the redness instantly and sort of... Well, you know the redness is going to come through. Yeah. It's only makeup. Yeah. So, so if you're having a bad attack, the redness is going to come through. So having a warmer colour yeah. will just help to neutralise it. But if you go in with the pink and the red, you're going to make it doubly worse. Because yeah. the pigment will still be on your skin and then you've got the undertone coming through yeah. too. And actually that's similar in the lips that um, <clears throat> I always used to sort of have... I always used to start a kind of juicy berry lip. Um... But actually I realised that just kind of picked up the redness yep, elsewhere absolutely. on my skin. So actually a kind of corally, nudie works better. Yep, it took absolutely. me 10 years to work that out. So I'm just going to use Brow Shaper by Max Factor. You've got lovely brows and this is propelling and very thin. This is shade brown, I think. Mm -hmm. It's great. Um, just extend your tail slightly there. But this yeah. is just a very soft, soft makeup. So just a little bit of extra definition on either brow. So if I just get your face here and just extend your tail that way and brush it through. I love a brow with a spoolie at the end, it makes it so much easier. Yeah. Right, so next I'm going to use Rose Gold yeah. for Rosie. Um, Laura Mercier Caviar Stick, these are brilliant. Now this is kind of like a goldy colour, it's not actually that pink because that obviously wouldn't be great. Um, so lazy about eyeshadow too, so this is so good. So what's this going to do for me in terms of, I mean, obviously it looks kind of pretty and shimmery, but is it, does it sort of give you a kind of youthful definition? Like how does it make you look prettier? So it just gives you a nice texture. So okay. it gives a nice light gold. So yeah. it obviously covers any kind of like little veins or redness or uneven texture in your eyes because I haven't overloaded the concealer there because it's very okay. soft. Okay, so very actually thin. the eyes have a sort of redness that kind of reads less Yeah, the skin, skin is more tone. transparent, yeah. isn't it? And sometimes it can be a bit pink or we can have a few little veins or... Um, this colour will just add, it says rose gold, but it's, it's a, like a warm gold, I mm. suppose. As I said, we don't want to have anything rosy on your face. No. Because you're naturally rosy. Yeah, I've got enough rosiness. Um, but this just adds lightness and brightness. And then when we put on your mascara, we'll just do quickly now, yep. your lashes will really stand out and everything that's bright. Yeah. I'm going to be using Kiko Maxi Mod, and I love this Time Lock brush. Ooh, I'm not very familiar with Kiko, but they're a good price point as well, aren't they? Great price point. Look up for me. Great price point and their tools are brilliant. There's so many lashes underneath. This is your curly side, you've got little bendy <laughs> ones here. 
and do these little straight and then we're going to just strip them out and it down for down. Lovely, you've got a nice bend to your lashes. And just have a look in the mirror. Well, I've never Ooh. been told that before. <laughs> How exciting. <laughs> Not a bend in your back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but a bend in your lashes. I just need to get mm. a little comb. God, they look amazing. It's so interesting how you just by putting a more time, more effort, and obviously your intense skill, you kind of it's amplify funny. it. You know, you look like 50% better. It's finding those products that work with yeah. minimal effort. I think that's the key thing. Um, and just evening out your skin tone. And whatever makeup you do just works. Yeah. We we're just saying that I do cheat a bit by having my lashes permed and dyed. <laughs> and I use this growing lotion on them. Oh, which one do you use? I use something called um, Lumigan. So it's prescription only. Oh, Lumigan. I know. Oh. I mean... We'll share the secrets. Okay, then. so it's a massive just secret. So it's like it? all the Kardashian juice and things like that. But basically, if we've got time for this, it's yeah. quite long. I think we'll make time. Uh, so it's a kind of... Uh, <clears throat> they found out they were giving drops to people with glu glucoma, glycoma. Yeah. And they found out as a side effect, their lashes grew really long. Right. So then they, uh, the FDA, the American, you know, Drugs Administration thing, uh, licensed it for lash growing. Mm -hmm. So you can use it and it basically slows the cycle of the lashes down. So whereas you would maybe have a 28 day cycle and you'd shed your lashes after 28, then it becomes like 35. So they grow longer. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Now, there might be ophthalmologists watch watching this who are like, you should not be using that. So, you know, as always, there are people that say it's a bad thing. There are people that say it's a good thing. There are, you know, people do report iris uh, discoloration. So if you've got very blue eyes, you know, like your gorgeous ones, you might want that. to, yes, you I might want to worry. About, you might want to consider that. Um, but for me, it's just great. I love it. So how short were they before them? They weren't that short. They were just normal. But now they're pretty long. Right. Right. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. Hmm. We will look into that further. Yeah. Right. So just to finish off, um, and just talking about having those kind of neutrally shades. These are yeah. all lovely. So a little bit of warm. This one. This has got a little bit less warm. So these are very similar to your actual lip colour. Yeah. So that's what I'm just enhancing. But let's use the hourglass because it's got such a lovely kind of like minty lip plumping finish to it. Which I Caroline's the only person that can give me lips. Hey. Yeah. So we need to get a red lip on you as well, don't we? At some point. Mm, not sure about that. Rosie swears that she can't wear a red lip. I can't wear a red lip. She can wear a red lip. I can't. You can. <laughs> right, well, then we'll film it then. <laughs> no practice. We'll have to do it. But also, you know, if you don't like it on yourself as well, that's another thing, isn't it? Yeah, I just feel very made up, but more I just feel like I've got, you know, I haven't got great full lips and I've always had the redness in my skin, so that's two reasons sure. why I wouldn't. And also I don't, it's not like it's not I very don't... helpful that you're yabbering on when I'm doing your lips, Sorry. is it? <laughs> Stopping. We'll make another film about that. Mm. Lovely. All right. So rub that together. What do you think of the texture? I don't oh, know what shade that is that. called. This is called um, Strike. Strike mm. or Stroke? My eyes are going. Yeah. Let me sure. tell you with my. Surely mind. it's going to be Strike. Strike. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be Stroke. Would not be good. Stroke lips. <laughs> my lad, release my hair now. Release I'm kind your of like hair. Ready for release this. Okay. Your hair. Oh. Lovely. Well, I think you look beautiful, but it, it's a personal thing. Uh, I, I mean, I wouldn't say I look beautiful, but I look really, I'm, that's the best I ever look, so thank you. Any redness in your skin, neutralise your palette, clean yeah. up your base, super prep skin, dance the concealer over your face and just kind of target those areas and make everything else quite soft. I hope that's been helpful and obviously we'll chat to you below and uh, look forward to hearing what you see and... Hearing what you see. Hearing what you see. <laughs> Hearing what you think. And um, yeah, chat later. Bye. Bye.